Let's run through the SD math section, but first, uh, you guys are probably wondering, whoa, 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 where'd you get this amazing desk from? Well, this is where I'll thank today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. My FlexiSpot E4 standing desk with the white frame and bamboo desktop is one of the best standing desks I've ever used. The size of the desk lets me put multiple things on it, even though I am pretty minimalistic as it is, and the design is super slick, not to mention the table is extremely, extremely sturdy. The cool thing is you can customize your standing desk preferred color and size of the desktop and desktop frame. So whatever match fits you, you can choose that. See, I personally get tired of sitting down doing my work all the time, which is why I like to switch things up and sometimes stand up and work. Cause ultimately it boosts my productivity. One of the coolest things about this standing desk is you can save your preferred heights with the save option. So you can always use the perfect height that suits you. Also quick tip, make sure to use correct posture when you're using your standing desk. If you want to boost your productivity and get this standing desk ASAP, be sure to check the link in the description below. Now let's do some math. Let's get right into it. So right away, I'm going to read the last sentence first. What does 12 represent in the equation? All right, so I already know 12 is that one time service fee. So I'm going to do plus 12 right here, right? So we know this is a Y intercept. So which one gives off that one time service fee, you know, vibe? Well, it's not total amount, not total amount. It's not price of one ticket, that's per unit, right? <clears throat> so right here, B. And that, that's a common theme, guys. That that one time fee, that one time payment. Alright, that's a common thing. So whenever you're you know trying to find what the Y intercept means, look for that one time thing. Alright. Uh uh alright, so X is the number of pounds of fertilizer A. Again, I'm reading the last sentence. Y is the number of pounds of fertilizer B. Alright, so I already know X should be paired with A. So fertilizer A contains sixty percent. So that's six that's sixty should be paired with x so wherever i see that 40x i'm taking that out so 40x 40x all right <clears throat> the total is 240 all right but it's down 60 percent so whatever x is is 60 percent in that so that is automatically b right it can't be this what is the sum of the complex numbers all right what's 3i plus 8i 11i okay this is the only one that has 11i done the equation above P and T are constants, which the following could be the value of P. All right, something like this, I will literally, so P times P, right? Because using FOIL has to equal uh, f 4. Because X times X will be X squared. So P times P has to equal 4. All right, so so which of these times itself is 4, 2, right? See how these four questions are like super easy and can be done really, really fast. What's the following the graph of the equation Y equals 2X minus 5? Guys, come on. Look at the y-intercept, negative 5. Which one doesn't have cross to negative 5? All right. Eliminate A. Eliminate C. All right. So B and D both cross to negative 5. So let's do a second check. Positive slope. So the line should be going this way. Only D satisfies. Eliminate B. All right. <clears throat> all right. So what is the value of 2x minus 3? Well, all you have to do for this, guys, is just plug in, you know, 18 for y. So then you get 36 divided by 3, which equals 12. 2 times 12 is 24, minus 3 is 21. See how I'm not writing that part out? You know, that stuff should be, it'll be able to be done mentally. And I want you guys to be able to, you know, like do that stuff mentally because it's, it's not hard. I really hope you guys understand that. And if you're not able to do this mentally, you just need to practice more until you are able to do these types of problems mentally. <clears throat> all right, a bricklayer. All right, so right away, I already know, it says which of the following expresses L in terms of N and H. Like when I just look at this problem, I already know what I'm gonna have to do is manipulate this equation into L equals, right? So that's not hard guys, just isolate the L. Divide by seven H, you get N divided by seven H equals L, done. So which one is that? Let's see. <clears throat> All right, like stuff like that is super simple. Like the more you practice, the more easy it's gonna be just to like look at the problem once, but oh, I know what this is asking me, you know? And number eight, which value of X is W S plus T of X equal X? Sorry. Right. So when you add these two together, when do you get X? All right. So let's do when X equals one, negative one plus negative three is negative four. So that's not a X equals two, three plus negative one is two. All right, done. Now you guys might be like, whoa, 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 check C and D. I don't have to. I, I checked B and it worked. This is a multiple choice. Only one of the questions are going to work, right? Only, only one of the choices are going to work. And I found it, so I no longer need to continue. Now, I guess if you want to double check your work, you can, but like you can always go back and double check your work when you finish all the problems. But let's just, you know, for the sake of it, let's check uh, C and D as well. 4 plus 1 is 5, <clears throat> so not C. 3 plus 3 is 6, so not D. P 
people might get confused at this. Like, whoa, this is so complicated, guys. At the end of the day, W of X is just a value, right? One of these values. And then, what the hell? W of X is just a value. T of X is just a value, all right? Don't get confused by the function notation. At the end of the day, guys, these are just values. Nine, if a uh, square X plus square nine sixty four was the value of X. All right, so this is this can be dumbed down as X plus three equals eight. So what is the value of X? Some people might be thinking, oh, it just is five, right? Because, you know, like, you know, five plus three equals eight. Remember, guys, this five is put under the radical. So that means you're doing square root of five plus three equals eight, which is not, you know, eight. So it's 25. Someone who's really fast at mental math will probably couldn't make this mistake and accidentally choose five because they basically get ahead of themselves. So always, you know, don't rush too much. For these like very, you know, problems that look that look very simple and very easy, just don't make sure just make sure you don't like slip over something like simple, right? Like this. <clears throat> so put in twenty five and you get five plus three equals eight. Alright. 10, his goal is to bicycle an average of at least 280 miles per week. So at least means greater than or equal to. All right, they all satisfy that. Okay. See, I'm trying to eliminate the questions, uh, the as choices as I go. You bicycle 240 miles the first week, 310 miles the second week, and 320 miles the third week. Which inequality can you use to represent the number of miles X and J could bicycle on the fourth week to meet his goal? All right, so when you get an average, you have to divide by four, right? And that equals 280. Or in this case, at greater than or equal to 280. Okay. So... <coughs> So we're gonna have the miles, right? So we have so we have the 280. So we have 280 plus 240 plus 320 and then plus x. Okay, divide by four. So it's not this. You're not dividing by three. Um, can't say it's not that yet. It's not this because this isn't dividing this x by four. You remember you gotta add up all the distances and divide the total sum by four, and that is greater than or equal to 280, right? So we have the sum of the four of the, like the, you know what? The sum of the weeks, right? And divided by four is greater than equal to 80. So if you were to manipulate this equation, you can multiply both sides by four, right? Now you get the sum, which is these four right here, add together. Times four is greater than equal to 80. Times, oh, you know, greater than equal to 40 times 280 is, yeah, this works. All right, so you can multiply both sides by four. This crosses out, right? And then you have, you have uh, this times four. So the answer is D. <coughs> okay, one last problem. The vertex, the, uh, for part two, I'll continue. The vertex of the parabola in the x, y plane above is zero. C, which the following is true about the parabola with the equation y equals a and negative equals c. All right, so B is you go to the right and C is upward. So the the in this case, the vertex is B, C. Yeah, so it's not... It's not C or D, because the vertex has to be B, C, because minus B means you go to the right, right? So positive X coordinate, and plus C means go up. <clears throat> and it's negative, so this opens upward, right? So if it's negative, it opens like this, downward, so B. And that's part one of complete SD math section, guys. Say subscribe, like the video, say good luck in the comment section below to get a high score in December SAT for taking it, or wherever your next SAT is. And be sure to check out the flexi spots that this guy have. Thank you for watching. Peace.